I would just want to go through now what we actually did in the research. Um, there were four parts to uh, the research and I'll go through each one very quickly. Um, and starting with um, a look at what the uh, current council tax collection policies across London uh, were or are. Um, and uh, we did this uh, primarily uh, through desk-based research and just one workshop. We did um, start a survey and we got some responses, but this was right at the beginning of the uh, pandemic. So unfortunately, um, obviously local authorities were, um, you know, were preoccupied with other things. So uh, we didn't pursue uh, the surveys. Um, so this is based on a sort of mix of evidence, um, uh, but hopefully is a sort of a pretty representative sample. Um, and what we found was that um, around 67%, uh, so two thirds of London boroughs, do take account of vulnerability uh, in determining their collection policies. Uh, but uh, it varied as to what stage this was at. And in many cases, this was uh, after uh, a summons or liability order stage. Uh, most London boroughs take account of ability to pay, um, so undertake some form of uh, affordability assessments, uh, again, at, at different times during the process. Uh, eight out of the 32 London boroughs had signed up to the uh, Citizens Advice Local Government Association protocol, uh, so that was uh, obviously about a quarter uh, signed up. Um, all councils really sort of followed the standard procedures, if you like, for collection, which are um, in the regulations. Um, so, you know, what happens when somebody defaults, um, the, there's a sort of due process to go through, um, which is laid down, a lot of it is laid down in regulations. Um, but about half uh, of uh, London boroughs have some form of breathing space arrangement uh, at, at some stage. Uh, and I think this still reflects the current position, but all but one of London boroughs use bailiffs as part of their enforcement activities. So there's much more which you can read in the uh, report, hopefully, if, um, if, you, if you are interested. Um, but that, that's a flavour of um, some of the findings on, on um, the current arrangements. What we also uh, sought uh, to, to obtain was. Um, you know, an idea of some of the barriers uh, to more flexible collection and enforcement policies um, that local authorities felt existed. Um, and uh, the first one really was um, performance measures. Um, the, uh, the key target or performance indicator um, for um, this area was in-year collections. Um, and, and the London boroughs we spoke to felt that that put pressure on councils to um, continue their and, and to see through their enforcement policies um, uh, you know, during the year or as quickly as possible, if you like, uh, so that they could meet that in-year collection target. Uh, data sharing was mentioned by quite a lot of councils as a, um, uh, an issue. Um, data sharing across different departments in, in the uh, in the authority um, that it was felt was was uh, hindered by the fact that there are different IT systems, um, uh, a range of issues around data protection, um, and also the move to universal credit, where less data is now available to local authorities. Um, and allied to that, um, what were considered to be fairly inflexible IT systems, although I think some local authorities seem to get around this. Um, but uh, what tends to happen is that an IT system is built around what the regulations say, um, so it can be pretty much inflexible uh, when it comes to sort of trying to build in uh, any other uh, flexibilities there. Uh, and then finally, language, uh, there was an issue. Um, there's quite a lot of feeling that the term ethical collection was um, was not right because it implied that those who um, were 
you know, not adopting flexible policies were acting some in some way unethically, whereas they were acting in, in accordance with the law. Um, but anyway, uh, it was the term flexible or customer centric um, collection policies was was preferred. So um, if we move on, we um, we also conducted two little bits of research. Um, the first uh, was quite um, quite an extensive piece of work. Um, it was using public uh, publicly available data across GB, I think about 313 councils in, for, for most of it. Um, and what we were seeking to do here was um, identify whether there was any correlation between some of the factors commonly uh, in, or thought to influence collection rates um, and uh, what actually happened in, in, in practice. So we looked at um, the nature of the council tax reduction scheme. Uh, we looked at the council tax charge itself. Um, uh, we looked at levels of uh, deprivation in, in, in these boroughs, uh, not the boroughs, it was, it was all councils, uh, and um, the type of collection policy um, that they had. And what we found um, after sort of mapping all this together um, was that only um, council tax reduction scheme generosity and local poverty rates were significantly associated or, or there was any significant correlation with collection rates. Um, council tax rates and collection policies uh, were not significantly associated with collection rates. Um, and uh, obviously boroughs with, in London with higher levels of relative deprivation tended to report lower council tax collection rates and that was replicated across the country. That was a very clear indicator. Um, but the only other uh, correlation related to levels of council tax reduction scheme. So uh, the conclusion here is that um, having a flexible um, collection policy um, wasn't in itself um, leading to uh, any deterioration in, uh, in collection rates, which was very interesting. And then the final uh, part of this um, involved um, a um, analysis uh, of uh, our of the impact on ability to pay uh, of different levels of council tax debt recovery. So if we can move on to that one, um, what we uh, what we did here, we had data from 17 London boroughs um, already. And that data indicated uh, that 77% uh, of households had income above their costs. Um, now, obviously people were on a low income to start with, but basically uh, using various assumptions, uh, we arrived at this figure of 77% of households who apparently were uh, managing or at least had income above their costs uh, on these sorts of assumptions. So that was our baseline figure. Uh, <clears throat> what we did was uh, then look at the impact of um, on, on household sort of financial resilience, if you like, um, of three things. First of all, um, dividing one month's council tax arrears, an average, uh, and, and uh, recovering that over 12 uh, months, uh, that had almost a negligible impact, 0.1% on, uh, on household finances. But uh, if, as the policy of course uh, tends to be, uh, if somebody misses uh, an instalment or two, um, then the full payment of council tax is, uh, becomes li uh, li liable. Um, uh, if the, the full council tax amount was uh, recovered over 12 months, then that 77% of people who were managing fell to 52%. Uh, so in other words, 25% more households were experiencing uh, an income shortfall. And if you add then the, to the final one, if you add the recovery and enforcement fees, which uh, most authorities uh, tend to do, 
uh, to that debt, so summons fees, uh, enforcement agent fees, and so forth, um, then that 77% of people who were managing um, fell to 17%. Um, so additional 60% of households um, from the original sample no longer able to make ends meet under this scenario. So this, we felt, really was quite a graphic example of um, the way in which um, you know, council tax collection policies can impact on the finances of low-income households. So uh, finally, uh, sorry, then we did do uh, a couple of case studies. Uh, I won't go into these in detail. Uh, again, uh, we've got an annex with the case study uh, from Newham in the report. Um, what Newham did was uh, conduct a review, full-scale review of all debt management across the council. Uh, and what they're trying to establish here is uh, a single view of, of, of debt um, as a starting point uh, for further work. Uh, Southwark have uh, introduced Step by Step, which is a, um, a service to sort of consolidate debts. Again, similar principles, really. Um, but also involving repayment plans and a, and a, a recovery payment, an agreed re recovery payment. Um, obviously, this involves commitment on both sides, and uh, that you know that has to be that commitment has to be adhered to, otherwise the plan folds, and, and, and you're back to uh, other recovery procedures. Uh, and then Walton Forest have got uh, as already a, a breathing space arrangement. Uh, for those on um, council tax reduction, uh, here a proxy, uh, proxy for vulnerable people, um, a, a breathing space before the seventh stage, which is very interesting, um, to allow um, anybody who's receiving um, CTR the opportunity to apply to their discretionary um, council tax reduction fund. So those were three uh, small examples, obviously plenty more across London, um, what we then uh, did was wind up the full report uh, with recommendations for both uh, the Greater London Authority, um, and I won't go through all of these, they're, they're in the report, but essentially for the Greater London Authority, uh, it was a matter of uh, explaining, promoting good practice uh, and giving support to, to the boroughs. And then if we move on to the recommendations for uh, London boroughs themselves, um, there are eight uh, main recommendations uh, to consider not adding the, the costs the, uh, um, to the council tax debt, um, so the cost of summons and, and, and all the rest of it uh, to the council tax debt because it just makes it worse and more difficult to recover, um, to uh, identify, um, again, as a proxy for vulnerable people, CTR uh, recipients in advance of the seventh stage to allow them to seek debt advice. To use the standard financial statement and to sign up uh, number eight to, to the citizen advice protocol, which includes that. Um, to place more emphasis on allowing repayment of one instalment to be spread over 12 months in the light of the research that we've just talked about. Um, and uh, again, to share more data internally to, to move towards this single view of, of debt. Uh, uh, to look at um, more customer-friendly contact hours, we found that um, that could be a problem in some cases. Um, and finally, to ensure that council tax reduction schemes are, are as generous as possible, and we'll come back to that subject in a minute. Meanwhile, I think it's uh, back to, to Dan. 